Just, I need to ask, was I the only one who had a crush on Lee the Fairy as a kid? Anyone else? No, I'll see myself out. Man, look at Rayman though. That dude's got some moves. He knows what's up. And hey, I know y'all have had some dirty thoughts about them nymphs. Don't you lie to me. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another video, and welcome back to the Creepypasta Vault. Let's enter. Today, we are going to try something different. I know that a few of you have asked me to talk about the worst Rayman creepypastas out there. The problem is that there is a very limited number of Rayman creepypastas to have been written so far. I couldn't find 10 stories that were so appallingly bad that they deserve to be on some top 10 worst thingies list. Therefore, I have gathered five creepypastas of varying quality that all have one thing in common. They all have something to do with Rayman. This video is gonna be a lot different from your usual worst creepypastas video list, I wanna try something different here. Instead of mercilessly riffing on these next stories and making fun of them, I thought I would simply just read them and maybe occasionally offer my thoughts or opinions and give some remarks, and maybe also give a few final words at the end of each story. Therefore, you can perhaps come to your own conclusions regarding these stories and whether you like them or not. Links to each story will be down in the description. Make sure you support your fellow authors, encourage them to keep doing what they're doing and keep getting better. Positive vibes all around. This is just a more uh, relaxing type of video I feel and one where we can all just sit back, relax and read some stories together. Let me know in the comments below if you like this idea and what I may be able to improve for the future. Thanks for tuning in. Let's begin, shall we? Number 5. Rayman 3 Disc 4 I was up late one night when I was in the mood for some nostalgic gaming. Oh, mate, I've been there before. I've been listening to tunes from my favorite game all night, Rayman 3 Hoodlum Havoc, so naturally I grabbed the CD case to play the game. In the CD case were three normal discs, you needed all three discs to install the game. There was an orange, a green and a blue disc in the case when I got it, but they weren't in the case when I opened it. Instead a yellow disc stared me in the face, my god is it sentient? It looked like it would have been disc number 4 if it wasn't for the handwritten CD4, clearly different from what I remember. It was 1am at that point and I thought that I might have bought this version at a con or something like that. I put the CD in the tray and booted it up to see if extras or any other sort of info would be on the CD. It booted up normally except that the intro didn't play, I didn't mind it much because it was a different version. I loaded a new file and again the cutscene didn't show up, instead I immediately started on the first level and I noticed right away that it looked like an alpha version of the game. The voice acting was clearly just copied from Rayman 2, some textures were missing and it seemed like the music was a demo for the final song. An alpha version seemed really cool to me because I would have loved to see what the early ideas were for the game. Oh cool, so it's like one of those old Rayman 3 demo discs that were used to promote the game back in the day. <laughs> I remember those, I used to have like three of them. I mean, I still do, they're laying around in my house somewhere. That's awesome, this, this is giving me a lot of flashbacks. I pressed onwards as I finished the first level by being dropped by Murphy, the sarcastic fly that flies you around the first level. The second level began and at this point in the game you don't have your hands, because Glowbox, your best pal, accidentally took them before the game begins. As I started my search for Glowbox, Murphy left me. I thought this was weird because in the normal version he'd be breaking the fourth wall constantly at this point by talking to the hintbox and flying alongside you. Instead, the hintbox said, He is gone. This is the moment I started to feel uneasy, this didn't seem right. I thought there might have been an inside joke amongst the team members of Ubisoft, at least I told myself that to keep calm. The game felt empty somehow, like alpha versions sometimes do. Not because of the lack of enemies, there are none in the beginning, but the game felt cold, heartless and scary. The music still sounded like a demo, but it was also a key down from the normal music. I figured that was the cause of this feeling. I now reached the point where a Glowbox would be hiding in a barrel from the hoodlums, but he seemed not comically scary, like he normally would. He seemed frightened, crying and weeping for his life. As I walked towards him, he ran away screaming something weird. I thought he said, They took him! You're next! 
I was weirded out at this point, so I put the controller down and got some Mountain Dew. Oh no, was that really necessary detail, dude? It was then that I thought of something. I never bought Rayman 3 myself. I got it when I was a kid and never bought any special version of Rayman 3 again. It didn't make sense, where were my original discs? Did someone break in? No, that couldn't have been. Who breaks in and replaces a game with a weird alpha version? It must have been a prank by a friend who came over at some point or something. It was late and I wasn't in the mood for overthinking. Oh, if only it were that easy, huh? I walked back to my PC and I finished the level by going through the door where Globux ran through. Realizing that Rayman should have had his hands at this point, I couldn't progress. This was weird even for an alpha, why would they make something which doesn't even give the player his main weapon? I went to bed at this point, turning off the PC and decided to figure it out in the morning after. The dream I had that night was the weirdest I'd ever experienced. I dreamt I was in Rayman's body. I was seeing everything through his eyes, but I wasn't able to do anything. It happened in the desert of the Kanoran, by far the most eerie world. Oh absolutely, that level traumatized 7 year old me. I think that was my very first experience with true fear and horror in a video game. A hoodlum stood in front of me, pointing his rifle to Rayman's face. In the games, Rayman would have just jumped and killed the guy, as hoodlums don't have bullets that go very fast, but this time he put his hands behind his back, as if Rayman was being executed. The whole time you could hear the bone-chilling grunts of Kanaran saying, Crush his bones, and tear off his flesh. <coughs> <laughs> the hoodlum walked up to me, pushed me over, and ripped my hands off. I screamed as hard as I could, but he spoke in the most chillingly cold whisper I ever heard. Shh, I will end it soon. He grabbed my head and pulled as I heard bones crack. Suddenly everything turned dark like if you pass out. I woke up as soon as that happened. It was 4am now and I was in full panic from that dream. Not wanting to go to sleep, fearing I'd have another one of those dreams, I went to the kitchen. I ate some snacks just to calm down, but it didn't really help. Standby lights from the TV seemed like eyes peering across the room, plants looked like silhouettes of people. Calm down, you gotta calm down, I said, as I felt my heartbeat go down. It's probably the Mountain Dew before I went sleeping. Oh, it's the source of all your problems, dude. Then I thought I'd go back to my bedroom because it was much more comfortable and it seemed like a good idea to listen to some music. But just as I left the kitchen, I thought I saw a silhouette on the balcony. For a split second, it seemed as if someone was waiting for me there. I froze in my steps, but when I stopped, it was gone. I thought it was the chair on the balcony that looked like it, but I was lying to myself. Anxious as I was, I still didn't want to go to sleep, imagining terrifying things in the badly lit room. So I walked towards my PC, turned the screen on, and I almost bent over to turn on my PC, but then I noticed it was already on and still playing Rayman. I rubbed in my eyes and I figured I left it on or something, and I tried to turn the game off because that was the cause of the sleepless night. It wouldn't close. I knew I didn't want to go to sleep, so I decided to just play the game and finish this torment it gave me. When I chose my save, I started in the desert of the Kanaran where my dream was. I could hear Kanaran grumbling in the distance, but that wasn't my biggest concern. Rayman was laying on the ground in a puddle what seemed like blood, without his hands or head. This shook me up, I was wide awake. It was happening in front of my eyes, but I couldn't comprehend it. Then that eerie hint box came up. Watch your back. It was then that I felt a rifle to the back of my head. He took my arms one by one and broke them with tremendous force. I screamed so hard that my lungs hurt as much as my arms. I couldn't move. I was trapped. And that same voice whispered, I will end it soon, as he pulled his trigger. And that was our first story! That was a bit of an anticlimactic ending, at least in my eyes. I suppose some dark entity possessed the Rayman game and found its way into the real world before executing the main character in the same way Rayman was in the dream? I would have liked some more fleshing out of this, some more creepy and foreboding details about the game, and a serious trimming of all the superfluous details that ultimately didn't matter much to the rest of the story. I think I enjoyed this story, but that was mostly just because of the nostalgic feelings it brought me. Still, it wasn't terrible and shows some promise. 
let's move on to the next story. Number 4. Rayman GBC Game Over It's happening. Every day and every night it happens. I know what you're thinking. What's happening? How did it happen? Are you high? I wasn't gonna ask that. Well, I'm not high, seriously. But the rest? I'll tell you no. My brother gave my old Game Boy Pocket to his friend to lend, thinking he'd get it back before we met again. He didn't though, and for a while I forgot about it. I played a few games, mostly old ones, because that's just my type. Deal with it. Oi, quit the attitude, mate. You may have noticed the photo next to this text on the thumbnail, but just hang tight, you impatient bastard. Oh, oh my god, why are you even telling this story if you're gonna be so rude about it? I eventually got my Game Boy back with only the game Pokemon Yellow to play on it. I wanted to buy more games, so I went down to a local gaming shop in a shopping mall. The dude there looked like he was in a good mood, so I smiled and said, Do you have any old Game Boy games? Yes, the man replied, and they're all in their boxes. You can see a few here. One game caught my immediate attention. It was Rayman. I read about how it was different from the PS1 version and decided to buy it. Everything was going well until a stranger walked by. I got distracted looking at the game that I bumped into him and he dropped something porcelain. It looked somewhat like a few parts of a body in the split second I saw it as it immediately smashed to a billion pieces. Ah, oh, my porcelain r The man suddenly stopped and stared at me. You did this. That is my most prized possession, and it's ruined. He had malice in his voice. Why he had his most prized possession in a shopping mall will forever be a mystery. Yes, exactly! I'm sorry, it was an accident, I swear! I got distra- I got cut off as the man continued to say, You'll be cursed for this the man said, beginning to start a scene. That game you got distracted from will be the end of you, I swear it. The man disappeared in the distance, leaving everyone staring at me. After feeling a little ashamed for ruining that guy's favorite... thing, though he did have it coming, maybe he was just gonna sell it at a nearby shop, because it seemed just as stupid. I managed to get home and find my Game Boy lying on my bed. I was excited to play as I heard about the huge differences. I heard a faint echo come from somewhere, which sounded like the man from before. That game will be the end of you, it said. I suspected this was just my mind repeating what the man said and carried on to play it because I'm untamable. As I started up, everything was fine. The game was really fun and a lot smaller than the PS1 version. Of course it is, it's the Game Boy version. But things got weird. Weird? The special stage. It was the last place I expected something to go wrong. I mostly ignored them and other times I beat them first time with a few seconds to spare. For those who haven't played these games, it was where you had to keep jumping up platforms and other things to get all the tings in a certain time limit. I remember seeing online that the time over screen looked like. It's shown above, I don't need to describe it. But one time I accidentally fell from a platform from the top down to the bottom. Rayman never took fall damage, but for some reason I heard a noise, like that of glass shattering in 8-bit of course, when he touched the ground. The time went immediately to zero and the screen popped up. It was Rayman sitting, staring at the screen. He looked terrified and the ghostly arrow, as seen above, was shot straight through his floating head. He was closer to the camera than before, and instead of time over, it said game over. The music sounded a bit like a voice was singing something to the tune, but I couldn't make out what. I was shocked from the jump scare. Normally if you don't check your time often, you'll shit yourself when it happens anyway. But not from the photo, but now I am. Why? Because I'm a pussy? No, don't be a douchebag. <laughs> what? I wasn't gonna say anything, you were the one who brought it up. I tried pressing the A button, but some text appeared. Rayman has died. There is no game left to play, it wrote. This was scarier to me as if that jump scare was supposed to happen. I restarted the game, but the game wouldn't load. It just gave me the image and the error. I showed my brother. Cool, you got a new game. What about it? He asked. Can't you see that photo? I said, shocked. Oh, so it's Rayman. Cool. Aren't you gonna play it? What? Can you not see that dead Rayman? I was getting pissed. 
Uh, he doesn't look dead, just holding his hand under the select screen as normal. I realized he only saw the main screen and I told him to play it for himself and purposely fail the first special stage. The same thing happened, the image and error. I then realized only people who have triggered this image can see it. I therefore kept the chart rage safe in case anyone played it. But just because of an image and error? That sounds a bit over the top, doesn't it? There's more. I went on to play the PS1 version, but when I failed the special stage, I got the same image, only better quality. I could hear the voice again and was sure it was singing. Only me and my brother saw this. It happens for every game we play when we get a game over, only with the playable character instead of Rayman, and the error's message is replaced with playable character's name has died. There's no game left to play. Sonic, Portal, you name it. It's there. We both had the same nightmare every day. It was a video game protagonist different each time, scrolling through a field. The sky suddenly became dark and a ghostly arrow shot right through his or her skull. It was a horrible thing to happen every night, seeing your favorite game character get murdered in your dreams every night. Me and my brother were playing a PC game and the message appeared again. An idea struck me. We would go into the files and analyze the image and tune. I analyzed the image and my brother did the tune. Analyzing the image came up with text. It read a creepy story of porcelain objects. I realized this was that man's fault and swore to get him back for this curse. My brother on the other hand looked terrified. After analyzing the song, he heard the lyrics and had a horrible dream that day. I'd like to say we got better, but I'd be lying. The next day he told me his new dream, I shall not tell and you'll see why in a minute. And later on, a while after dinner, I found him dead in his room. He had hung himself from the ceiling. Oh damn, that came very suddenly. The nightmare I had every day seemed more creepy, either because my brother couldn't take it and killed himself, or because I felt like there was no one there left to protect me. It just gets creepier every time. It's been exactly one month from when my brother committed suicide. I wondered if he ever did the right thing by stopping the curse, or if it's still a good idea. Maybe I should... No, I'll get the man that cursed me and then I can rest, side by side with my brother, knowing that the curse is finally over. Wow, is, is that it? This story is definitely not unfinished, no. I do apologize, but this story was pretty rough. It needs a lot of revision and a much better plot structure. Things need more flow and need more of a reason for them to happen. In this story, nothing really made sense and everything just seemed to happen for no rhyme or reason. The brief attempts at making our main character feel relatable also fell flat and made him pretty rude and unlikable, but that's just my opinion though. Next story. Number 3, Rayman Legends, Darkest of Them All. Hello there fellow readers, like many I am a fellow fan of gaming. I am also a fan of creepypastas and so because of a recent event I thought would never happen in real life, I will share one story about a certain video game titled Rayman Legends. The game is the newest installment in the already amazing Rayman series, before came Rayman Origins which I also played. It happened near December. I had got my hands on a new game for my brother's Xbox 360. The game was called Rayman Origins, a game in which I wanted to play for a long time. When I played it, I immediately fell in love with the characters and series. Its vibrant colors and wonderful level design was enough to make me squeal, but unfortunately it didn't last. As much as I begged him not to, my brother had to sell his custom paint Xbox 360 and all the games with it, including Rayman Origins, in order to afford the games for the new Xbox One. Naturally, I was saddened by this, but he promised me he would buy me the next installment in the Rayman series, which is Rayman Legends. I was thrilled. I get to play Rayman Legends! Heck yeah, I thought! November came around and I was already beginning high school. When I got home, my brother said to check his games and apps on the Xbox One. I went ahead and did, and I was shocked with what I saw. There on the screen was a downloaded copy of Rayman Legends. I was filled to the brim with happiness, thus making my day. After days upon days of playing the game, fighting toads and beating the bosses, I began to notice something. Turns out, I had these things called lucky tickets. I scratched one and unlocked something. A Back to Origins painting. My mind lit up. I get to play previous levels of Raven Origins. Awesome! 
I needed to get all of these paintings. I simply want to relive my days playing Origins. It wasn't long until I had to go to bed. December was here again and I was happy and cheerful as winter was my favorite season. But that also meant Christmas was coming at a time to spend with family and being happy. When that eventually happened, I got a gift from my brother. It was a copy of both Castle Crashers Remastered and Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare. I simply could not believe my eyes. I thanked him and immediately booted up the games. I played for a while until I remembered I had Rayman Legends to play as well. I was already close to 100% completion, and so that kept me going when I was facing the mama of all nightmares. When I finally beat it, her, I got some lucky tickets. Two were 10,000 lums, one was a creature, another a 10C, and finally a Back to Origins painting. But that was odd, by this point in the game I had already acquired all Back to Origins paintings, so then why did I unlock another? I went to look at it and the painting said, The Darkest of Them All. Odd title aside, I was wondering who this was referring to. Could it be the Dark Teensies? I had no idea and so I checked the painting. It didn't have a preview of the level like all paintings do. Instead the painting was black and had two yellow glowing eyes. They seemed to be glaring at me. Out of curiosity, I tried playing the level. No, you're not the one I seek. What? Okay, I realized I was playing as Glombrox. I tried entering as other characters. None of them worked except for one, the original Rayman. I tried entering the painting, this time it allowed me to enter. I was a bit creeped out by this point. It then loaded up an invasion level. This one was of Dark Rayman, so naturally I was going to have a difficult time beating this level. I always hated playing invasion levels that have Dark Rayman in them. The level was about to begin when I noticed there weren't any teensies to save. Still the level continued like normal. I eventually beat it and it threw me into the hero's gallery. Okay, so what was the point of that? I asked the same question. I tried re-entering the painting, but it wouldn't allow me. It would just give me a message saying, Don't you think you've had enough? I tried again, this time the message was, What? Do you enjoy pain, you sick weirdo? Whoa, 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 quit with the kink shaming, man! What the hell was this game saying to me? I shut the Xbox off, sighing and shaking my head, thinking, Great, now it's broken. I didn't touch the game for three months. Spring break was here, now I have all the time to relax. I played my PS3 for a while playing Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix. I got bored and decided to boot up Raymond Legends on the Xbox One. I tried continuing my save file to get some teensies, but to my surprise, the save file was gone. The only options were New Game and Uplay. Frustrated, I hit New Game, oh well, at least I get to relive it all. But the utter annoyance that I had to regain all my progress was such a drag. I had to once again earn every creature and everything. It was an annoying task to do. I finally managed to beat the last level of Back to Origins again. Opened my lucky tickets and found... Another Back to Origins painting. Was the game joking with me? Of course the painting was the same painting I unlocked previously. This time, however, with a different title. He seeks him, the optimistic one. Okay, what does that even mean? I tried entering with the current character I was using, Ray Voss, and once again, I couldn't enter. I tried entering as Rayman, surprisingly it didn't allow Rayman in either. A message simply appeared saying, he's had enough misery. I tried entering as Globox, surprisingly it allowed me in, I once again had to beat an invasion level with no teensies to save. This was starting to look familiar. But once the level ended, the painting was gone. I checked to see if anything changed. Certainly enough, things did change. The main gallery was now darker, and there didn't seem to be any light source of any kind. Polycus, the Sloth, and Bubble Blower was nowhere to be seen. Every world was now locked, and the creatures I unlocked were now gone as well. However, there was only two paintings available. I'm gonna skip the next paragraph to save some time as it's mostly just pointless and jumbled. Again, the full stories are down in the description. It was gruesome to a point where I shut the Xbox One off immediately. What the hell did I just witness? What did I even play? 
All these questions were circulating to my head when I thought of one thing. What if all those gone heroes were killed by Dark Rayman? I felt my head pound. I desperately needed a break. A few hours later I booted the game up one last time to see that the save file was deleted. But this time I didn't dare press new game. I asked my brother if he could delete the game for good, but he asked, Why? I thought you liked this game, what's wrong with it? I told him everything I had witnessed, but he shrugged it off and said, yeah, You were probably just seeing things, little bro. Are you kidding me? He must have seen some damn elaborate things. Was I? I told him to replay the game and see what happens. He had the same occurrence as me, but the painting said, This is your fault, and it wasn't accessible. No character could get in, the game would simply say, Do you want them to die again? Or, It's already too late for them. My brother said, Damn, here bud, I'll delete the game and download PVZ Garden Warfare 2 for you. How does that sound? I told him that would do the job perfectly. Still didn't help the nightmares I had. Two months after that whole encounter with Legends, I felt like I wanted to play some Plant vs Zombies Garden Warfare to take my mind off things, but the copy wasn't there. It was replaced by Rayman Legends. I was shaking. How the hell did this come back? I managed to encourage myself enough to play the game. This time the game didn't have that extra painting, thank god. I turned the Xbox off one last time. I went to my Chromebook to whisk my cares away. I checked my emails for anything important. I then noticed I had received a message from Ubisoft. Wait, what? I never contacted them. They apologized for me encountering a dark prototype of Rayman Legends. They stated, Hello there, Mr. B we apologize for you having a copy of our prototype of a Rayman project. It was supposed to be an expansion pack for Halloween, but we felt it was too dark and scrapped the idea altogether. However, only one copy of the prototype was launched as a downloadable. Unfortunately, the prototype also had many bugs and glitches in it, and those bugs went on to your copy of PVC Garden Warfare. We asked Microsoft to remove that one copy and replace it with another one of Rayman Legends. It's rather sad, but you won't be able to play Garden Warfare forever again without it corrupting. I was heartbroken. I could no longer play one of my favorite games of all time. Um, just get another copy? But I had to move on eventually. I decided to finish Rayman Legends one last time. My headache couldn't possibly be any worse. I was about to unlock a new character, which is the only thing that lifted up my spirits. I got enough lumps and opened up my menu to see. New hero unlocked, the darkest of them all. And so the cycle repeats, I guess. Hm. That story had some major flaws and was way too long-winded. I feel a lot of it could have been trimmed or cut down, and I feel the red line that was the story got way too jumbled and muddled the further down we got. Still, I think the first few paragraphs were rather charming in that young author writing about their favorite games kind of way. The story did lose a lot of steam though, and ultimately felt rather lackluster. The email from Ubisoft was at least an interesting touch, adding some explanation for why all these things were happening. Eh, the story could have used some more polish. As it stands, it's not great, but if the author is watching, don't let that discourage you, there's still a lot of potential here. Keep writing, friend. I'm sure you'll create better things in the future. Number 2. Rayman's Limbs Ooh, are we gonna find out how Rayman lost his arms and legs? Notice how Rayman has no actual arms or legs. I honestly think that is the very first thing everyone notices about Rayman's character design. The only thing visible with Rayman's movement would be his only arms and only foot and head that only moved. I found that scary when I was younger. I've had this thought for nearly a year now, and it's creeped me out ever since. A few months ago, I went to a garage sale I found while strolling through the park. I love garage sales, you always get the best bargains, so I would never miss them. I walked into the garage sale and first thing inside was nearly everything from toys to furniture. I happened to see a Wii version of the game Raymond Raving Rabbits, noticing it from the front cover. Although when I saw the front cover, it looked different from what I remembered. The actual name was Rayman Rabbids, almost as if the game was leaked. Also the classification was rated MA plus 15, which I thought was odd at the time as the game was a kid's game if I'm right. The game's case was busted, although the CD looked perfectly fine. 
I asked the man behind the counter, wait, there's a counter at a garage sale? How much the game was? His face turned white like snow and said to me that I could have it. I felt the urge to ask why the front cover looked different. He told me that it was a leaked version of the game and only a few exist. I asked how he found the game. He told me that he found it outside of Ubisoft's headquarters near the trash can. Yes, that is where all prototype games from the biggest video game companies in the world end up. I was so excited to play, I was just so hungry for nostalgia, and now I've got the game. Although I was a little scared to be honest. I opened up the busted CD case and inserted the disc into my Wii disc slot. The game loaded up and the title screen appeared. Looking at the game's title screen, it seemed fairly normal. It was just Rayman doing all types of dances. Although there was something that seemed off about Rayman. His arms, legs, and neck was visible. I guess that it was a glitch and ignored it, of course. I pressed play and made a new save game. The game opened with Rayman sitting in a forest with some frogs. The frogs got pulled from the ground by the rabbits and popped from the ground up. Now, rabbits are bunny looking creatures that are really crazy. Personally, I never understood them and if I can't remember, they formerly obeyed a big black rabbit named Commander Sergway. Sergway, Sergey, I don't know how you say it. The rabbit stared at Rayman for a good 30 seconds and for a split second, a blood drop came from the rabbit's mouth, which was very odd, I thought. The rabbits let out a huge scream as if they were being tortured, which I thought sounded very odd, and the huge Commander Sergway came into the scene kidnapping Rayman. Rayman ended up in his customizable prison cell and was forced to do tests. I mean, it's not really customizable, it basically just gets upgraded over the course of the story mode. I chose Rayman to walk outside his cell. I was excluded by the rabbits outside. The first thing I see on my screen is rabbits raging and screaming in the audience. I even saw a rabbit with a pitchfork. Even some of them were vomiting blood of how angry they were. <laughs> oh my god, that is hilarious. I got scared, but curiosity took over me, and I wanted to play more. I walked into one of the tests, it was usual as expected. There was one game called, if I can remember, Rabbids Get No Presents, where you had to run with a present that is about to explode and give it to another rabbit so they can blow up. It was funny, although what creeped me out was that Rayman had his arms, neck and legs visible. It's gotta be a glitch, I guessed. I paused the game and searched up on Google photos of Rayman and all of them came up as the usual Rayman with no legs, arms and neck. It's gotta be a glitch, I kept telling myself. Oh come on, did you not find the early concept art for the first Rayman game where Rayman actually had limbs? It's very easy to find. After every few tests you finish, you get a plunger, and Rayman used those plungers to stack up out the window in his customizable prison cell to escape. I had a few at that time. As I finished more and more tests, I happened to find a test named Bunnies Don't Use Toothpaste. It was a game where I had to pull out worms from the rabbit's teeth. Oh god, that game is absolutely disgusting. As I was pulling out worms from the rabbit's teeth, I happened to see for a split second a female Rayman replace the rabbit while hearing a cry. I saw this and let out a huge what the fuck. I got sick of these glitches so I stopped playing for a while. I walked up to my local McDonald's to get something to eat. I just couldn't stop thinking about the female Rayman glitch. What kind of developers would do this? I got a cheeseburger meal, walked back home and ate it. Well, that was essential information. I turned back on my Wii console and got straight back into the game. Before my eyes, the game glitched to the scene where Rayman stacked up all his plungers trying to escape. Rayman escaped with happiness and joy. The wind was rustling on him. He was just so happy, happier than I actually thought he'd be. After 5 minutes of Rayman running in the woods, a jump scare of Commander Sergway came to my screen with a high pitched sound, causing my glass of water on my table to break. The game froze into a black screen for a minute, then I saw Rayman sitting on a concrete bed, tied up to it. Rayman looked around, seeing all other types of Raymans, from baby Raymans to teenage Raymans, and they all had their arms, legs, and neck. Sounds of crying, moaning, grieving came out of the Raymans. Some were even being suffocated, tortured by the rabbits. I think someone needs to inform the author that Rayman is just not a species. Rayman is Rayman. I was shaking as hell. I was gonna gag. The blood coming out of the Raymans were more than photorealistic. It looked real as if the developers got a real torture tape and used the sounds and video techniques for it. Rabbits were escorting Raymans to this white room, and I saw a glimpse of a saw with photorealistic blood 
on it. Oh my god. Just because you change hyper-realistic to photorealistic does not make it any less of a cliché. Raymans were screaming for their loved ones, screaming out, No! My baby! No! First time hearing the Rayman speak. Raymans were walking out with no arms, legs, and neck. Some unlucky Raymans also were stuffed into rabbits. Every rabbit you kill is another Rayman you kill. I was the last Rayman to walk into the white room in game while being escorted by a rabbit. Commander Sergue instantly put my two arms under the saw. Commander Sergue turned the saw on while my Rayman screaming out, No, please, no, I'm begging you! I felt so dizzy. I puked all over my carpet as Commander Sergue was amputating my Raymans' arms, legs, and neck. The blood coming out of my Rayman seemed real as it splashed all over the ground. After my arms, legs, and neck being amputated, Commander Sergue threw them into a box filled with other limbs and parts of a Rayman's body. Why are they doing all this? My Rayman walked out with no legs, arms, and neck. How does that work? The game faded into a black screen, then returned to its title screen. I was absolutely scared. I felt sick and I puked a few times. You know that new game called Rayman's Origins? That's just a cover up for this game. They knew the mistakes they made. They knew that people played this game. Rayman's Origins is just a fake origin. The game that I played was the real origin of Rayman. No, no it wasn't. Rayman Raving Rabbits obviously takes place after Rayman 3 due to Rayman's edgier appearance in the game. Although he did have his Rayman 3 look in Origins and Legends as well, uh... Man, the Rayman timeline is hella confusing. It's as if every game retcons the one that came before it. There were other Raymans before, but they had to be killed by Commander Sergue for some unknown reason. I wish I knew. Today, I went to Ubisoft's exhibition, instantly seeing the lead developer of Rayman, Michel Ancel, next to a Rayman figure. Oh yes, of course you met Michel Ancel. I walked up to him slowly and asked about the game Rayman Rabbits. His face turned white instantly when I asked him and told me not to say this to anyone. God, this is so stupid, the main character could just be referring to the normal Raven Rabbits game. I agreed. He told me this. Oh, uh, let me try, let me try a French accent. Uh, before I worked, no, that's that's Russian. Before I worked on my own Raymond Rabbits, I worked with a man named John Zvegre. He was Russian, of course. Russian, of course. What does that mean? He was crappy at times and always talked about killing blood and how he was always right. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna piss off so many French people. I'm so sorry. I played the game that you played. That was made by John Sergue. Those scenes you saw were made by him. All I did was create what would be in the original game Raymond Rabbing Rabbits. <laughs> John released and edited a game earlier than its release date. Before I confronted him, I played the game and saw the horrible scenes and the glitches that he purposely put in the game. I asked him why he did this. He told me that those scenes were purposely put into the game were representations of him in the army when he was there. Commander Segue was a representation of John. This is what he did to thousands of innocent people, he said. I had to add an adjective to my new game as we would lose a lot of money if we didn't make our original game. Michelle took a deep breath and told me these words that scared me. When my boss found out about this, he instantly fired Jon Zergue. My boss told me to get the remaining copies of the game that remained in the HQ to burn them in the trash as if we kept it, it would corrupt our company. And that was the last time I saw my bows. <laughs> Again, apologies to all French-speaking people of the world, I am so sorry. And then the story just ends! Oh my god, that came out of nowhere! That was incredible, the funniest story I've read in a while. God damn, the blatant disregard for logic and reason, and on top of that, the over-the-top and extremely dramatic descriptions of everything made this story incredible, enjoyable, and in all the wrong ways. That was delightfully insane. That was a highlight for sure, but not because it was good, mind you. Oh no. 
Oh no. Well, we still have one more story left to go. Let's get it over and done with, shall we? Number one, Rasov. Oh man, yeah, I love Rasov. That guy was awesome, and his mansion was incredibly memorable. I hope this story lives up to his legacy. I was always a fan of Rayman, though I was never really good at those games as a kid. I've recently grown a fascination with them. The game had a certain charm to it that just couldn't be replicated in any other way. Did you just switch from talking about Rayman games in plural to a single game? I'm confused. I played all the games, from the original to Rayman Origins, except for one that I could never get my hands on no matter how hard I tried. This game was known as Rayman 3 Hoodlum Havoc, just download the HD version. I heard from my friends who played it that it was a blast, but I didn't want to hear a word about the game or even the story. I wanted to experience the entire game myself when I played it, and not have a single bit of the game spoiled. I just moved out of my parents' house a few weeks ago. I just graduated high school and was moving out for the summer so I could show my parents I'm a responsible adult. As a gift, my parents gave me an old GameCube as well as a few games to go along with it. It wasn't the greatest gift, but we didn't have the money to go out and buy one of those new gen consoles. I mean, I would be stoked to be gifted a GameCube too. I picked up the old GameCube from the box and hooked it up to my television. It actually looked a bit fitting since the TV was just about as old as the GameCube. I picked up a few games, some of them bringing back old memories. Paper Mario, Luigi's Mansion, Pokemon Coliseum, the classics. But then, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted a package within the box. It was written in black marker, To our independent son, from his loving parents. I ripped it open, wondering what it could be, and just my luck, it was Rayman 3. Aw, that's actually a bit charming to be honest. I tried to hold in my excitement. I didn't want to disturb the other people in the apartment. I hastily placed the disc in the GameCube and began to play. The game started off with some very high-paced music, but as I later learned, the visuals were very different. Instead of flying across a forest area, it was inside a mansion. Since I never played the game before, I assumed this was normal. I pressed start and made a new game. I played the game for a few minutes where I finally reached the inside of the Fairly Council. However, I didn't get a cutscene with the king telling me I needed to head to the land of the living dead, instead I was just sent right there. Um, did you forget that you had to clear the forest before the land of the living dead in the game first? I hopped into the portal and it sent me straight to the swamp area. It felt a bit odd even while playing it. The NPCs were celebrating and I had no idea why. I just jumped into the portal and left them to their business. I walked into Begonia X's fight room and she just sort of ran around in circles. I had the crosshairs that told me I needed to hit her, so I did. Each time she released a howl of pain. When her health reached zero, she fell down and began to sob uncontrollably. I felt so horrible and had no idea what just happened. I continued through the mirror and continued through the level. When I reached an area with a moat and a large wooden door in the distance, I didn't notice any hoodlums wandering the area ready to fight. I simply walked forward, the door opened automatically and I went inside. The screen cut to black for just a second, and when I was allowed to see it once more, I noticed I was in a familiar area. I was within the halls of the mansion I saw in the beginning of the game, but why was I here? What was its purpose? Unlucky and unwise is he who risks entering my domain. A voice echoed from the game. It was much louder than any voice prior to this point. Let's give him a warm welcome. Music began to play, it was fast paced and rushed, and then in large red text, a single word appeared. Run. I saw a health bar at the bottom of the screen which indicated I was fighting a boss, so I ran off to the right. Ooh, this sounds familiar. I ran and ran, hearing the voice echo through the halls. I had no idea what I was up against, but I didn't dare to find out. So I continued to run through the many rooms, searching for something, anything that I could use in this fight. <laughs> A cackle was heard from behind Rayman, and the camera spun to reveal Rasov, but he looked 
odd. His gun was bloodied, and a skull was impaled on the spike of his hat, and he looked very angry and agitated. He took aim with his gun, and I quickly dashed behind the nearest cover. Cover exploded, and I rushed behind another statue. I noticed both doors were locked, so there's no way out. After a while of hiding behind reappearing covers, I decided it was time to take action. I rushed up to Rasov while charting up a punch, and socked it in his torso. It actually took off quite a bit of his health, and the force knocked him back through the door. The other door opened, and I continued to run. I kept running for another couple minutes until Rasov cornered me again, and the dance repeated. When I eventually defeated Rasov, he disappeared and I heard his voice said, Haha, <laughs> no one can stop me! As I walked around, searching for an exit, I took a look at a few of the pictures. Some were just regular standalone pictures of him, but I started to see some strange photos. I saw a few pictures of him and his kids playing around. This guy has kids? I thought to myself. To me, he didn't seem like the kid-friendly type. What with his apparel? But that's when I noticed something that set me off. It was a picture of his wife, but it wasn't on a photo. It was on the ground, and as it turned out, Begoniax was his wife. I started to worry. I had flashbacks to when I fought her earlier in the level, and I began to think, no, no, there was no way I actually... But it was all made clear to me when I reached the next stage of Rasov's fight. He stood there on a giant wrecking ball of bloody spikes, with two corpses already beginning to see signs of decay, but it was clearly his two kids, Jesus. One was missing a skull, that's most likely being used for his hat. You will not get far, he said, his eyes glaring right at me. The wrecking ball swings backwards and then forwards and then reaches its pinnacle point where it will release at top speed. I could run now, but the controller was unresponsive. Right before I was smashed, oh ho Rayman opened his arms as if he was ready to embrace the ball. The balls swung forward, the rusty chain screeching against hard metal, and it swung at Rayman and... After the incident, I couldn't play Rayman for a couple of days. Any Rayman. I was filled with guilt, depression, and a bit of fear. I couldn't imagine why the game would make me do that. Kill an innocent woman, and then have their psycho husband kill me. But, when I did decide to replay it, everything was normal again. I fought Begoniax and she ran off. She was sad, but not like how I saw her the first time. But when I got to Rasov, I realized what was supposed to happen was that I was meant to chase him. But after what I went through, part of me didn't want to. Part of me just wanted to stop there and leave it. But I pushed forward and convinced myself it was just part of my imagination. However, when I got to the Wrecking Ball, I couldn't help but notice... A skull impaled on one of the spikes, with a big nose and yellow hair, splitting off in two directions in the front. Wait, so did the game split into two timelines? One where Rayman died and another where he survived and didn't kill Begoniax? Or did Rayman send in a clone of himself to finish the job? Or is Rayman just infinitely respawning? That was not a very satisfying ending, it left a lot of stuff unexplained which lessens the story quite a bit and makes it feel rather pointless and redundant. I think the story definitely raised some interesting implications regarding the relationship between Razov and Begoniax in the game that it's mostly kept subtle unless you stop and think about it, but it basically just amounts to they were together and now they're not. The detail with Rayman's as decaying skull being on the wrecking ball didn't serve much purpose either, so I don't really know why it was included. Great stories need that extra oomph to make it worth it, you know? This was certainly not the worst story I read, but there was still a lot of flaws holding it back. I think the first story was my favorite, just because of its simplicity and the fact that it made me feel all nostalgic, more so than the other stories did. Here's my list, ranking these stories we just read. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your rankings down in the comments. Well, that's that. Those were the 5 stories that I gathered for you. I hope you enjoyed yourself and had a good time, because I sure did. I hope you liked this format and the way I did things this time around. Let's exit the creepypasta vault and gain our bearings. I have been your guide, my name is Dennis. Take care and stay safe. Thanks for watching everyone, stay awesome. Good bye.
Still, it wasn't terrible and shows... <laughs> in the already amazing Rayman series, before it came... Oh my god, these voice cracks, man. This time, however... This time, however... This time, however, with a different...